Hi friends, welcome to Azure content. This is part 25 in Azure Data Factory playlist. In this video, we are going to learn about the auto create sync table option in copy activity of ADF pipeline. So suppose we have a requirement to copy multiple files which are present in our ADLS that is Azure Data Lake storage and we have to copy them into individual tables in SQL Server. Okay, so each file should create the corresponding table in the SQL Server. Okay, so we have two options in that case. What we can do is either we can manually create all these tables or we can go for something called auto create table option in copy activity. Okay, so let me show you uh, the requirement first. So suppose we have these multiple files in our ADLS container. Okay, so I currently have six files with the name as file1.csv up to file6.csv and I want to load all these files into my SQL Server as different tables. Okay, so my table name should be starting from uh, dbo.table1 up to dbo.table6. Okay, since we have six individual files in my ADLS. Okay, so in that case, what we can do is the first approach is manually we can go ahead and check the schema of each of the files and we can create the table in SQL Server with the same schema. So suppose we have to write the create table script for table one where the column names will be name and department. Okay, similarly for file two, which we have to load in table two. So there we need to create the table with these seven columns. So this is just six files, but suppose you have thousands and thousands of files, then it is not a reliable process to manually create the table and then load the data. So in that case, what we can do is, let me go back. So we have something called auto create table option when our sync is a tabular data store. Okay. So what it does is if the destination table does not exist, then it will simply create the table with the same schema that is present in the source file. Okay. So when we use copy activity and when we need to load the data into destination table, we have the option to auto create the sync table if it does not exist. So let's try to practically see everything. So here I have these six files that I want to load into my SQL server as I told into the table names as table one to table six. So let's create the pipeline for the same. So let me drag a copy activity into the pipeline canvas and here in the source, let me create a data set pointing to the ADLS container, which we have. Let me give the format as CSV and let me point it to ADF new container, which has the six files that we want to load as a table. So I'm not going to import any schema and first row will be header. So I'm good with that. And in the sync, let me use an existing data set that is pointing to my Azure SQL table. Okay. So if I show you the data set, it is having this linked service, which has all the connection string for my SQL server. Okay. So it has the SQL server name, database name, user ID and password. And if I hit on this test connection, so you can see it is successfully getting connected. Okay. So here I need to click on edit and we have to provide the table name here. Okay. So that it will give the same table name when it creates the table in the SQL server. So since we have to load multiple files into table, so we have to make it dynamic. Okay. So for that, I'm going to create a parameter here saying table name. And I'm going to use the same parameter in the table name here. Okay. So let's hit on OK. Let me go to the pipeline again. And here you can see the parameter is asking for value. So here we cannot give a single table name that is table one or table two. We have to make it dynamic so that it will be taking the table name dynamically for each of the files. So what I'm going to do is let me cut everything that is I'm removing the copy activity and let me get a get metadata activity. So what it will do is it will get the file names coming from this container so that we can loop through each of the files to copy them into table. Okay. So here in the settings, let me use the same data set that we have just created. Let me go down. 
So we have created this delimited text 56, which is pointing to ADF new container. Okay. So here in the fill list, I need to select this child items. So once I hit on debug, what it will do is it will give me the file names of all the files present in this container. Okay. So you can see this is succeeded. If I click on this output, so you can see all the file names from file one to file six are coming perfectly. Now we need to loop through each of the files for that I need to use this for each activity. Okay. So I'm just connecting these two and in for each I have to loop through the output of get metadata activity and the array which holds all the file names is called child items array. Let me show you that again. So you can see child items is the array which has the file names present in the name property. Okay. So we have to use item dot name because here we have specified the items as child item array. So each of the JSON present in the items array refers to one item. Okay. So if we give item dot name, it will pick up file one dot CSV. And in the next iteration, item dot name will get file two dot CSV. So similarly for every iteration, it will get the individual file names. Okay. So we are good. And inside for each, I'm going to paste the copy activity, which we had cut. Okay. So we are good till this point. And in order to make the source data set dynamic as well, we need to add the parameter called file name. Okay. You can give any name here. And here in the file name, I'm selecting the same parameter and it has auto generated this expression data set dot file name. So now here in the parameter, we have to pass the value. So as we discussed, file name is nothing but item dot name. Okay. So here, let me give item dot name. So for each iteration, it will pick up the file names one by one. Okay. So we are good. Similarly in sync in the table name, we need to provide the expression so that it will dynamically create the table for each of the respective files. Okay. So if we give item dot name, then what will happen is it will create the table name with the same name as the source file names. So our table name will be file one dot CSV file two dot CSV, but we don't want that. We want the table name as table one, then table two, table three, table four, table five, table six. Okay. So for that, what we will do is we will replace file by table. Okay. So item dot names will take these file names. So here only we have to use replace function. And in this item dot name, we will replace this file keyword or file string with table. Okay. Let me enclose it. And then only thing remaining is we have to remove dot CSV as well. Okay. So for that as well, let me use replace function again. And here, I will replace dot CSV with empty string. Okay. So we are good. So what we are expecting is suppose for the first iteration, our file name or the item name is file one dot CSV, right? So what will happen is instead of item dot name, it will take file one dot CSV. Okay. And on top of it, it will replace file string by table. So what will happen is it will give output as table one dot CSV. Okay. And now, after that, we are again using replace function and we are removing or replacing this dot CSV with empty string. So then this whole thing will be replaced with empty string. So then our output will be just table one. Okay. So similarly for other files, that is file two dot CSV, we will get the output as table two. Okay. And so on. So we are good now. So now here we have something called table option where we can select none or we can select this auto create table. So if I read through this information, it says it automatically creates the table if non-existent, which means if the table does not exist in the sink, it will create the table automatically with the same schema as present in the source. Okay. So it will have the same schema. That means same number of columns present in the source file. Okay. As well as same column name present in the source file. And it says it is not supported when the right behavior is stored procedure. So it can only be used in insert and absurd. Okay. So it cannot be used in stored procedure as the right behavior. So we are good. Let's go back and let me hit on debug. So it says no value provided for parameter file name. So in get metadata activity, actually we have to use different uh, data set because, because we are using the same data set in the source of this copy activity as well. So let me create another data set because we don't want to parameterize this one. 
for that i'm going to point it to adf new container okay so we are good so now let me hit on debug so let's wait pipeline is in progress so you can see get metadata has given us the six file names and for each of the file names individual copy activity is running in parallel okay so the copy activity is finished let's go to the sql server and we are expecting that all these tables that is dbo.table1 to dbo.table6 should be created now let's check from start dbo.table1 let's see if it exists yeah so you can see it has the same data as is present in the file one let's check so you can see name department and four rows so name department are the two column names and four rows it has and if you notice file one dot csv is dynamically loaded into table one okay so it has no mismatch it is accurately uh, loaded into table one okay if we see table two let's hit on f5 so you can see it has given the data let's compare it with file 2.csv so you can see it has the same data as is present in file 2.csv okay so we did not need to manually create these tables because we had this option called auto create table option in copy activity okay So in the sync, we have selected this auto create table option and we have given the name of the table dynamically because of which it is able to generate these table names. Okay, so we are good. So now suppose we hit on debug again and we rerun the pipeline, then what will happen? Let's see. Okay, so currently we have four rows in table two. Let's see if we hit on debug, then will it reload the same data again and will it create the duplicates? or will it overwrite on the same data let's see so let's wait yeah so execution is finished let's check the uh, table again so you can see it has again loaded the same data and it has created the duplicate records so in order to avoid that what we can do is let me go back to the copy activity and here we do not have anything called truncate table okay so we do not have the direct option of truncating the table so what we can do is we can use this pre-copy script which means before loading the data into the destination table run this script okay so before running the copy activity it will try to run this script into the sql server so we need to truncate the table okay so we need to write a small query called truncate table and then we need to give the table name here but in our case, since we are loading multiple tables, so we cannot give one particular table name here. Okay, so in order to do that, what we have to do is let me copy this expression, which will dynamically generate the table names one by one for each of the iterations. Okay, and here let me go to the add dynamic content. Let me write truncate table and then let me paste it. Okay, so here let me convert it to string by giving this string interpolation. That means curly braces after this at the rate. So we are expecting that for each iteration, it will give the table name here. So for first iteration, it will be truncate table, table one. Then for second iteration, truncate table, table two. And then it will try to load the data from files to table. Okay. So let me hit on debug again. So let's wait. yeah copy activity is in progress yeah so execution has finished but before checking the result let me check the copy activity input okay so here if i expand this so here you can see in the pre copy script it has generated the script as truncate table and then table 5 similarly if we see other inputs so here you can see truncate table table 4 so it is dynamically able to get the table names okay because of our query okay so similarly you can see for each of the iterations it has actually taken different table names okay so we are good let's check the output so here if we execute this query we are expecting that it will again result in only four rows because it should have truncated this whole table and then reloaded the data from file into the table 
So let's hit on execute. So you can see it has done the same. It has truncated the table before loading the data because we have given this pre copy script as truncate ta table and then dynamically we are passing the table name. And if you see table 2 is having correct data similar to file2.csv. Similarly, let me randomly check file6.csv. Okay, so it has these data. If I go back and see table 6, so you can see it has the correct data. Okay, so we are good. Let me go back. So we understood that we don't need to manually create the table in the sink. We can use this auto create table option. And if we need to execute any command before copying the data, for example, if we need to truncate the table, then we can write a small query here in the pre copy script, which will run before the actual data load from source to sync. Okay. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you like the content. Please hit on like button and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. Thank you.